Good day, viewers. Uh, welcome back to yet another video of Blockchains for Millennials. I'm Marunthati Kale, an intern with Blockchain Lawyer. And under that tutelage, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to handle a lot of questions regarding blockchains and the latest updates which are coming around. So this time around, I decided to pick up something which is a very hotly debated and a hotly viewed topic, which is the NFT, a non-fungible token. And so address a few of my questions because this is a very new topic. I've connected with the founder of Blockchain Technology, or uh, Blockchain Lawyer, pardon me, uh, Mr. Varun Sethi. So welcome, sir. How are you doing today? Wonderful. It's always good All right. to bring energy around, so excited. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. So uh, jumping straight into it, uh, without further ado, what the first and the primary question would I, why would, what I would like to ask is, what is the basic idea behind an NFT? What is an NFT? Very nice. So NFT is one of the hottest topics around in blockchain space. So I, I see to it as sort of the fourth generation. If I look at it from a technological perspective, uh, the blockchains were there, which resulted in cryptos. And then from cryptos, people sort of create a variant called DeFi. And now from DeFi, again, a new big popular thing is coming up, which is called NFTs. NFTs primarily means non-fungible tokens, as you pointed out. Uh, fungibility is a concept which has been around in money uh, forever. Fungibility simply means that one dollar is equivalent to another dollar, or one rupee note is equivalent to another rupee note. It means Precisely. all the currency notes, uh, one thing is identical to another thing. That means fungibility. So when, is, when we say non-fungible tokens, of course, we're talking about tokens in a blockchain space. And second, we are talking about non-fungibility, which means that one thing is unique to the other. Now, this uniqueness is important, especially in, say, aspects where you want to have just one rare thing which does not match with the other. It's like maybe diamonds where one diamond is different. Of course, there can be some conflict with diamonds as well, but one diamond is radically different from other. It has its own features, own values. People look at it differently. Uh, like the, India's very own Kohinoor, it's just one in the world. So uh, NFTs, I think, uh, uh, is a new concept. There are lots of, lots of uh, I think, legality and lots of technology to support it. Right, okay. Uh, that's interesting. So we can think of NFT as something which cannot be interchanged. Am I correct? Correct. Absolutely. Right. It's, like it's one in the world. So it's very unique. So uh, keeping that thought in mind, how is an NFT different from cryptocurrency in the light of the concept of fungibility and as an asset class? So most of the cryptos as we see primarily are fungible tokens, which, which by nature they have to be because one Bitcoin has to be equal to another Bitcoin. Otherwise, it, it, it will have a, a different value. So uh, similar, a uh, one dollar note has to be equal equivalent to another uh, dollar bill. So uh, how they're different is that I would say they run on the same premise, some same logic as as sort of running being powered by the blockchain. But I feel that yes, uh, there is a, a notional difference, uh, a legality difference, a use case difference. Uh, here we are talking about things which are unique in nature yet different from each other, though running on the same principle of the powering technology. In cryptos, right. it is just the opposite. You want the technology that is a blockchain technology to power it. However, all of them have to be equal. Only then the exchange can happen. Here we are talking about rare items which are then valued and using the benefits of blockchain, putting those records on blockchain primarily to prove the ownership right, right. of who owns this say, piece of art, who owns this piece of art, and that is put on the blockchain. So there is no question or debate about who, the ownership of that blockchain. Right. Okay. That is interesting. So in terms of assets as well, they vary slightly. One is a more unique form and the other would be say something which everybody would invest in. It's, it's a different carve out from the, uh, from the main vertical of digital assets. It's a, it's a different vertical. I would say if, if we are fighting in the world today to get uh, uh, recognition for digital assets as a separate asset class, this is a subcategory within that asset class. So, uh, it's radically different, I would say, from cryptos. All right. Uh, so what would you say, what is India's stance on NFTs and in which direction do you think the legislature will take it? Will it take it in a positive manner or a negative? I was still a few years away from understanding uh, NFTs in the Indian ecosystem. Of course, there is lots of buzz in the last few, uh, I would say last six months or so, there has been uh, uh, lots of buzz around, of course, now with Indian exchanges also coming up with their own NFT market space, marketplaces. So it opens up new avenues for, uh, say, uh, art form users 
uh, unique uh, uh, people who are creating say say unique arts or other kind of assets which are then uh, only in digital form they may have a representation in the physical form as well but primarily we are talking about the digital versions uh, which are then again uh, using the uh, the benefits of blockchain technology we confirm the ownership we say that we are selling say digital art form uh, you may be well aware that uh, uh, the developments that happened in the last six months uh, yes, yes. This, this, uh, digital artists from us uh, called david willman uh, now that yes. person, popularly known as people ended up selling through christie's auction 69.3 million dollars worth of a single oh my god photograph with 5000 images called every day well, wow. so single photograph being sold again, it was bought by an Indian origin Singaporean businessman. So, yes. so these things, of course, they have their own excitement, but they also have their own set of controversies in the sense that how is it that a single digital photograph uh, can result in uh, sixty-nine point three million dollars, close to almost seventy million dollars? Given the fact that and there's one analogy that I can uh, sort of uh, wanted to share with our viewers. Uh, when I talk, when I say that, okay, people who is just, I think, about 39 years of age, uh, uh, creating this digital art form through coming up with digital art forms every day, and, and he creates one picture every day, and this, this thing that he sold for $70 million is a collection of 500 photographs, uh, which is sort of put as a collage in one photograph, and that, is a, that has been sort of auctioned. Now, what is interesting is that it has been auctioned by a website called Christie. And that Christie okay. website in 2018 also auctioned uh, another person's physical art form. That person was called David Hockney. Oh. And that David Hockney is amongst one of the most highest valued physical uh, art forms sold. And that was sold for $90 million in 2018. Oh my God. So when oh, you, wow. And, and what is even more interesting is that when people went to David Hockney asking that, okay, your thing was sold in physical form at $90 million. And now this new, and, and mind you, David Hockney is 83 years of age. And now this new kid, 39 year old, goes to the market and sells it uh, for, for $69.3 million. Also given the fact that before October 2020, not even one of his paintings or one of his digital arts has been sold for more than $100. So it's- Oh my God. It's absolutely- it's a boom. So now when people went to David Hockney, 83-year-old, uh, world's most highest uh, valued uh, uh, artist, uh, selling through Christie's, uh, uh, Christie's auction, he said that, well, NFTs are just, just not there. I, I, he doesn't believe in NFTs. So people, but so now, now it's a very interesting thing. So uh, at $70 million, uh, people is valued third in the world and David Hockney is valued first in the world. Now, there's a massive mindset difference between rank one or rank three. So this is very yeah, so. legal perspective, digital art getting sold, uh, valuations and other things need to be upgraded to understand how to value these things. Of course, everyone has their own methods of valuation, but this is surely, a, I would say, a good problem to have. And that's, that's a very interesting worldview and both of them are equally accepted, but Radically you can just see the difference. Radically different. Beautiful. Physical Radically, world. extremely different views. Exactly. All right. Uh, jumping on, uh, what would you say is the one thing or a few things you need to keep in mind while investing in an NFT? Uh, well, I would say it's, it's uh, while it surely assures you as an owner of the NFT that you are by, by far the only owner. There's no dispute regarding the ownership. However, it also then puts you in a massive question about how can you value, uh, say, a small picture uh, or, a, or a tweet. If I may take this example, Jack Dorsey was the CEO of Twitter. He sold his yes. first tweet. Uh, and the tweet yes. was five words, setting up my Twitter. That's it. Just, that's it. <laughs> and someone actually bought that tweet for $2.9 million. And that someone happens to be a blockchain company CEO in Malaysia. Now the question is that why would someone buy someone's just five word tweet for $2.9 million? Exactly. This is what was my next question to you. That was asked out of the buyer that what makes you pay $2.9 million? Or well, the person simply said that just like you, you value, uh, uh, say, beautiful paintings in the physical world. Uh, I feel that it has value around it. And it's, it's just between, mm -hmm. it's just a relationship between buyer and the seller. 
value in that thing. They feel uh, the buyer in Malaysia company feels that uh, there is there is something that they are triggering off a new revolution that they are triggering off, and thereby uh, there is an opportunity for people to follow suit, and thereby valuations for digital art forms and other similar methods, which are unique in nature, uh, digital in nature, uh, they can well be sold on the NFT marketplaces. So the concept is really beautiful that people will pay or people will buy something they attach value to. So it does not matter if somebody else attaches to it or not. Correct. So that how much you attach a value to something. Okay, interesting. Uh, keeping that in mind, why would you say that the NFTs are in a sudden boom? And why is it, why is an NFT, say for example, setting up my Twitter account so expensive? Again, I think it's too early to comment on those things. But yes, uh, I think why are they expensive? They're primarily, I think, creating a good buzz. Uh, people want to buy, they want to be the first buyers of NFTs. Maybe 10 years <laughs> say that maybe uh, doing digital auctions might become a, a very common thing. Uh, but it's always who does it first. So people want to get that, that quickly get that, uh, that presence and that uh, attention that, okay, we were the first ones to buy uh, digital assets. Uh, we feel that, yes, there's an opportunity uh, for, say, uh, I, I see this tectonic shift happening in the last few years, uh, especially if I see the music industry for that matter. Today, if I'm a musician, I don't have to go to a music company, sell my songs, and then that music company distributes it. I can simply put it up on a certain platform where my users directly connect to me. So things like I, I've seen uh, the growth and uh, we, we are all witnessing this growth of people not uh, sort of producing their films through big film houses. They simply go to an OTT platform, maybe go to YouTube for that matter. And they directly just, just they don't launch or they don't uh, publish their uh, artwork, music, film, music, films, everything. They just directly go to a certain marketplace sell it to their users directly and the users can directly pay them, pay the artists directly. So there's no middleman that is there. Now this, okay. is interesting. this is interesting because we are seeing this thing massively changing in the last few years with the internet speed going up, people want to see online content and the middlemen also being, being sort of kicked out of the place. Now this okay. thing, this thing along with the development of the blockchain technology can have massive implications in the music, art, and uh, industries which are sort of unique in nature and where artists do not get their, their share. Even in the Indian film industry, if you look at it, uh, oh, the actual yeah. artists forming, forming uh, or creating music gets about 20% of the share of the music rights. So if the music, yeah. the rest of say, it, yeah. or say 1 million, he, he receives only 20% of the 1 million or even less for that matter. So, yes. so I think by that logic, even the gaming industry would gaming be. Industry, yes, of course, gaming industry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so going forward, I feel that NFTs are a wonderful concept, uh, which can revolutionize uh, the music industry, given the fact that we are amongst the highest filmmaking and music, as well as art creating, content creating country in the world. So, uh, if we are amongst amongst the top few, uh, I would say that uh, we should look at NFT as validating who created the music and ultimately who's buying it. Okay. So it gives due credit to the creator as well and, due credit and creates absolute value for them. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, so from how I understand it, NFTs are pretty much borderless, right? So if my question being, if a country has placed say sanctions against carrying out business or sale with some other country, so would it apply to NFT as well? Oh, that's a very interesting one. That's a very tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I say tricky one because the the countries across the world are still figuring out how to uh, value, how to tax, uh, how to even record, how to uh, create uh, guidelines and protocols for even blockchain or crypto transactions, which are borderless. I think NFTs, uh, it, it is they are surely borderless. It's like, think of it this way, that there's an auction of beautiful arts in France and you're sitting in Singapore. Now, how would you want to do a, a buy? You, you want to buy those arts. You've got to physically travel there or there might be an online version of it. But there are controversies around it, uh, whether this art is pure or not, whether the artist uh, uh, has duplicated this thing or not. I think the, the thing that we are trying to achieve with NFTs is that we want to validate who the true owner is. And this gives lots of uh, impetus on the intellectual property laws as well. It, results in absolute and non-ambiguity regarding who the real owner of the art form is. 
I think this will have far reaching implications, especially from the copyright and the intellectual property laws as well. Yes, this is what my next question to you was that, you know, how does NFT in fact even figure into the intellectual property law and copyright laws at present? I'm very, very excited about what NFTs can do about the intellectual property laws in the world. India is still evolving the uh, intellectual property laws. We look at US as one of the most advanced uh, uh, intellectual property laws in the world, but they would also need some time to understand uh, how uh, NFTs uh, would be valued and how NFT yes. can then validate. It's surely a positive step towards validating who the true owner is. Uh, it also puts to rest, say, challenges around multiple owners claiming ownership of a single digital art form. So those things will surely be settled by uh, validating those transactions on the blockchain. Uh, we are just expecting that uh, NFTs will surely add value to the current existing intellectual property laws of the world. It's not just one country, but every country needs to update those intellectual property laws. Okay, this is a very interesting thought because what it makes me now question is that keeping in mind the copyright laws and stuff, do you think most of these artists know about their rights and obligations when they create an NFT? Well, most of these artists may not have even heard about blockchains. I think we need to educate uh, more people, get more people huh? in. Uh, there would be valuation criteria also put in in times to come. This, this is my expectation uh, because just randomly valuing something, again, it, it's between the buyer and the seller, but there has to be some nexus about uh, valuing certain things. From that perspective, yes. Uh, do the artists know about it? Uh, well, uh, I just saw a tweet from Nikhil Chinappa today, tweeting India wants crypto. So, uh, uh, AMD <laughs> coming up with that tweet, of course. So, he's, he's been a hodler for the last few years. We expect him to uh, sort of inform his industry uh, about uh, this NFT thing. And it also gives due credit to the creators of, of artistic uh, forms of content. So, of course, I think it's, it's a good thing to have. Okay. And uh, last question probably of the day would be, if I'm, I have an NSP, like NFT dispute, is it possible for me to sue someone? Possible no. to sue someone. While, while I would say yes, the, the laws are still being uh, evolved around it. Uh, there is no such clear law pertaining to NFTs. But... Can it, I think uh, suing would primarily be regarding who owns it. So then we go back to the blockchain ledger and confirm that, okay, is it this person who paid for the uh, transaction? Is it this person who bought the art form? Uh, I think disputes can arise pertaining to the single art form uh, being created twice. And uh, then it creates or reduces the value of the art form that has been purchased. But as long as there is validation from the content creator that he's only created one unique uh, uh, once one in the world kind of a uh, content and that is being bought by one unique person which is then validated by the blockchain there would be lesser uh, I think the whole purpose of of NFTs on blockchain is to borrow the best of the both worlds borrow uh, validation immutability transparency from the blockchain and then also update the intellectual property laws to give due credits to the real uh, content creators of the world so it's a, it's a Good thing that is happening. I feel that in the long run, intellectual property laws will be massively updated to accommodate uh, this new craze, the NFTs, especially in the content creation uh, side of things. One of these articles I read addressing the very last question, can you sue someone, was that it stated that a gaming company had uh, made crypto-based gaming tokens in their games. And uh, I think it was, I think they have those character um, character upgrades and wigs and stuff. Okay. So. What started happening was that investors or people who were in the gaming uh, arena started thinking of it as an investment. And so he had to eventually, I think, cut it out because he's like, I don't want it to be an asset or an investment. It's just a gaming token inside the game. So because then he brought up this whole debate, you know, can someone sue me because it's not an asset or, or it is an asset for that matter. So I think, I think that was a very interesting arena to be in. It, it is a good problem to have, as I stated earlier. It, it totally depends on the content creator. Now, uh, what NFT does is that it gives, gives lots of rights and responsibility to the content creator. And it also gives lots of power to the content creator. It, it is them who now, who now can decide whether they want to sell their certain digital arts or physical arts to, to some uh, valuable buyer. Or do they want to retain it? That's totally their call. We all know what happened with the Crypto Kitties, the game that was built. Oh yes, oh yes. Using, uh, I remember this yes. back from my early days of 
crypto yes, NFTs and all that stuff. But yes, it also resulted in crashing of the Ethereum blockchain. So it has it comes with its own challenges. But I still feel that it is good and exciting times to be in the blockchain space uh, with all these new developments coming in. Uh, people valuing one tweet, five letters at two point nine million. <laughs> Amazing, phenomenal. Musk uh, stated that he would we would sell something on NFT, then sort of withdrew his words. But I think it those kind of developments will happen more and more, and we will not even realize when these digital art forms become part of our life. Just like we have, we don't find anything sort of uh, different when we when we look at physical auctions, people valuing say a, a physical real estate. Uh, recently, uh, well, someone bought bought virtual real estate in Canada uh, through yes. NFT. And those things, those things today might sound crazy, but in times to come, you might even have the virtual world uh, buying of those those assets within the virtual world. Well, virtual, I would say, is getting more and more real. <laughs> oh yes, that's the huge concept with us now, like of it now. Well, this has been really enriching and enlightening for me because being a newbie into the world of NFTs and blockchain, I think it was a good, I good starter for me. So. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, joining in and addressing my questions. No problem. Thank it's so much. wonderful to talk to youngsters and do spread the word with other youngsters so that uh, more and more Most people definitely. can this thing and uh, we are able to contribute to the ecosystem. Most definitely. Thank you so much, sir. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye.